Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This video is about the option of adding extra radio tray support and how to easily build it in. Derived from the dynamic soaring models to handle high G loads, but can add some extra crash protection for any of the slope style airframes. This mod was first suggested by Trent on the forums. Thank you Trent for the great suggestion. This mod was specifically for the Juicy DS airframe to support the battery area and handle the G-loads of dynamic soaring. And now that these 3D printed airframes are pushing well over 200 miles per hour and staying together, the extra support is well worth the trouble even if it's just to protect the structure during landings. There are now features in the parts to make this easier to build in. And the DS airframes have this suggested in the instructions. It was also easy to add this feature to all the radio tray variants. For normal flying, this probably isn't necessary. But not every landing can be as perfect, and a little more support up front can be nice. Whoa! Not what I was intending. Looks like the nose cone came off, but otherwise survived. No. The radio tray battery area does have the support of two full-length carbon longerons. And the upper wing saddle carbon is in place mostly to support the wing attachment area. But continuing the upper carbon forward is an easy option, without adding much weight and mostly using the material you already have. Adding this should be an easy mod for most of the models, with any of the available tails. After figuring out the full fuselage length 2mm rod longerons, the remaining carbon should be more than long enough to reach from the back of the wing saddle all the way forward to the battery area. Unfortunately, the extended fuselages like the stretch will require an additional carbon piece to get the full benefit, as the longeron cut length does not have enough excess to reach from the wing saddle back all the way forward. The 2mm carbon rod is very useful, so having some extra is not a bad idea. Another detail to know of the extended carbon is it sort of crowds the servo area. Most of my builds are a single tail servo, so moving it over is easy for pushrod space. The two 9 gram servo side by side is a little crowded already, so the smaller 4.5 gram servos might be an option or is using this angled two 9 gram servo radio tray I just designed the right way to go? Let me know in the comments below if this is a desirable option, and it may be the subject of another build video. So I didn't figure this extended carbon would be that difficult to add, but I messed it up more than once. Pull truded carbon works best in tension and holds the layers together, so making sure the ends are well glued is always my goal. But also not mistakenly gluing something before it was ready. And the added difficulty of aligning the radio tray to glue it as the stiff carbon tends to keep it crooked. After many builds, I have settled on the front to back assembly method. With the main feature of marking, aligning, clamping, and gluing the radio tray to the fused body first before adding the carbon but you can do it however you want. So here goes. It is best to dry fit check everything before gluing, plastic and carbon. Trim and cut to length. This also includes the tail pieces. Mark how much the longerons stick out in the radio tray. Pull the upper carbon out of the radio tray for now, but leave the longerons in place. Figure out the right vertical orientation of the radio tray to the fuse element and mark the alignment. Pull the radio tray forward a little and add the nose cone and mark this maximum forward alignment of the radio tray. Now everything is marked and loosely assembled. Position the longerons to the forward marks. 
and with the nose down, glue the radio tray to the longerons. Once tacked dry and no drips, push the radio tray into the body. Then I align all the marks and use a C-clamp to secure it. Also do a quick straightness check, adjust if needed. Then glue the plastic overlap seam of the radio tray to the fuse body. It's also a good time to add glue to this seam and let it dry. Remove the clamp and reinsert the upper carbon. Glue in place. And drip glue down the carbon and continue to build the rest of the fuse and the tail, following the regular instructions. Well, that's it for this mod. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And check out my other videos about printing, different materials and testing, and flying these Soarcraft designs to the limits of what's possible. This channel is funded by viewers like you purchasing my files on my website for printing planes just like this, and helps me to continue to refine, develop, and share new ways of making them better, faster, and cheaper to hopefully benefit everyone. Or at least to have a good time. Nice. Thanks for watching and see you next time.